I think that a lot of practitioners may be aware of some of the neuropathic medications, maybe not all of them. Uh, and, you know, unfortunately, uh, opioids are, are not helpful in this subset of uh, population. And sometimes we, we in the pain management field will sometimes um, have patients that come to us that are already on opioids and they're not, still not doing well and obviously that's why they're there. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because it is a very, it's a small cohort of patients, but they're the most difficult patients to treat. What I would want practitioners to know is that you'd start obviously with, with the least invasive and move towards more invasive strategies if, if the least invasive and more conservative treatment options are not beneficial. The most efficacious medication that we talked about is amitriptyline, so I would definitely start with amitriptyline and go up to doses of around 75 milligrams per day. And uh, other tricyclic antidepressants can be helpful. Um, serotonin, norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors can also be beneficial. But it turns out that SSRIs are not. And um, moving down that list, there are other medications, things like lamotrigine, like I talk about, and carbamazepine, um, gabapentin, and Lyrica can be very helpful, especially because we think that there's ectopic firing of calcium uh, channels in these areas that are stroked. And, um, and then moving down further, uh, we have the idea of uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation. And patients that benefit from that may be uh, more prone to having beneficial from more uh, implantable devices, things like deep brain stimulation. That can be helpful in as much as 40 to 60 percent of patients, and this is as far out as two years. So this can be a, a, good, um, a good potential area of therapy for patients that could otherwise be very difficult to treat. And then uh, I hope that in the next five or ten years we'll learn more about how much that interplay occurs between the periphery and the central nervous system and maybe even start seeing things like spinal cord stimulation as a means, uh, a novel way of treating what we thought was normally just a central pain phenomenon. So that was, so those patients that had zero out of 10 pain, the people who went through the study had a block. And obviously the, the shortfall, the shortcoming of the study is the fact that obviously we can't block that area every single day because that's not something that we can just, it's not sustainable. But the proof of concept there is that there's something going on in the periphery, which we didn't even think about looking when we try to treat these patients. So it opens up a whole new area of investigation for potential therapeutic options like, for example, spinal cord stimulation. So what if we blocked that peripheral afferent sensory input into the central nervous system? Could that, in effect, be a way of treating central post-stroke pain?